Welcome to another SBR Productions video. Make Rail Sexy Again is about shifting the way we think about urban design in India. In part 1, we discussed the crises our cities face if car ownership trends continue. And in part 2, we talked about solutions to avert the car apocalypse. If you haven't watched them, links are in the description. This video is about the future of transportation. As we discuss this, I'd love to hear your thoughts and suggestions in the comment section, and we'll talk about them in a future video. In India, we've made it a habit of leapfrogging. Many of us skipped landlines and went straight to smartphones, skipped traditional physical banking and went straight to e-wallets like Paytm and Freecharge, skipped over a basic photo ID to having a biometric Aadhaar with fingerprints and iris scans. This means it's not irrational to think that many of us will leapfrog the traditional model of car ownership and driver licensing. This is going to happen because of the brand new Indian transportation model. ITM will be the first large-scale initiative to seamlessly integrate connected autonomous cars, ride-sharing apps, and electric vehicle technology. ITM will fulfill our people's aspirations of not only having a car, but having a car and driver available 24-7. It'll be as simple as opening an app, entering a destination, and boarding your autonomous vehicle. An encrypted blockchain-based transit network will then calculate the most efficient route and communicate with the surrounding vehicles, while you play games, watch TV episodes, or catch up on emails. Let's talk about the tech. Fully autonomous vehicles which carry passengers from A to B, with no driver input, already exist. Look, Ma, no hands. <laughs> no hands. <laughs> However, in order to achieve the full benefits of autonomous mobility, the use of human-controlled transport has to be restricted in the areas where autonomous vehicles operate. This is because every four minutes, an Indian is killed on our roads, for a total of 140,000 deaths annually. Studies suggest that human error is responsible for over 90% of all accidents. This means that eliminating unpredictable human drivers and ensuring pedestrian and cyclist separation will massively reduce the number of lives lost on our roads. Human-controlled transport is also responsible for most of the traffic congestion we encounter due to our slow reaction times and inability to coordinate effectively with other vehicles. This is compounded by distracted, drowsy, and drunk driving Getting only four to five hours of sleep in a night is the same as driving while legally drunk. It is human nature to feel safer when we are in control. However, a system where cars communicate their position, speed, and direction with other vehicles at the speed of light is much safer than our crude system of meaningless horns, frequently ignored road signs and traffic lights, and rarely used turn indicators and rear view mirrors. On highways, for example, high-speed convoys will be formed they will be like a train, where each carriage can separate to take passengers to their final destination. In fact, ITM vehicles will coordinate so efficiently that higher throughputs can be achieved using less land. Smartphone apps like Ola and Uber already allow you to choose vehicles of different sizes and comfort levels depending on your needs, while their algorithms coordinate pickups, drop-offs, and carpooling along with invisible payments. ITM will be powered by a similar system along with additional features for multi-point travel, long-term use, and tourism. With over 300 million smartphone users, the people already have the tools they need to adopt ITM. We are introducing electric vehicles in a very big way. And the idea is that by 2030, not a single petrol or diesel car should be sold in the country. A fleet of electric vehicles powered by clean, renewable energy sources is the ultimate goal for sustainable mobility. EVs will also reduce our dependence on imported hydrocarbons. Additionally, ITM vehicles won't run out of battery power during rides, since the autonomous system can remove them from service and send them straight to chargers if their range drops too low. It would be impractical for the whole nation to transform into a giant ITM zone overnight. Existing cities will transition in phases with the conversion of specific zones and corridors that are gradually expanded over time. Smaller towns will find it easier to implement ITM than the large metros, while greenfield cities like Dolera, Nea Raipur, and Andhra Pradesh's new capital city, Amravati, will have the opportunity to incorporate ITM right from the start. 
simultaneous existence of ITM and non-ITM zones will require transitioning between the two. Parking ride lots, car sharing, car rental, trains, planes, boats, or even the Hyperloop are all ways commuters can transition between different ITM zones or between ITM and non-ITM areas. For the residents of an ITM city, autonomous transportation will be another basic utility, like water pipes, electricity cables, and cellular towers. Its use will be as routine as using an elevator. As ITM spreads across our cities, actually driving will become a leisure activity restricted to specific scenic routes and racetracks. This way we will still be able to enjoy everything we love about driving, with none of the drawbacks. So, to sum up, we introduced the brand new Indian transportation model, which synergizes connected autonomous vehicle, ride-sharing and electric car technologies, and then discussed how our cities will make the transition. I'd love to hear your thoughts and suggestions in the comments section, and we'll discuss them in a future video. Thank you for watching Make Rail Sexy Again, an SBR production series.